boom, boom. Oh, yeah, this, oh, yeah, I had already preset everything, so this is easy mode. Now you just click play. You ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready now, and you're ready? It's great. Yep. Now we're at the same, <laughs> on the same page. <laughs> so, at the exact time that we said that we would meet, what can I do for you? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I just kind of wanted to get the rundown and kind of see mm -hmm. what I could do better. Um, I have... I guess kind of like for my future plans, some kind of stuff I'm uncertain of. I have five bills sitting in uh, my inventory right now, and I'm kind of deciding like what the best way to spend that would be. Yeah, um, considering so, tomorrow I, and... Yeah, well, I'm planning for, for try to like 17 star as much as I can tomorrow. I don't know. That might end up costing me everything, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just kind of want to see the direction uh, I should go. And uh, I'd like to probably like my short-term goal would be easy lucid. Mm-hmm. Um, and long term, I don't really have like a long term goal, but I kind of just want to like push as far as possible, basically. Mm hmm. So this is your your main character, the Corsair? Yeah, the Corsair. Yeah, it's basically my you... only character. I don't really have any mules gotcha. or anything like that. That was your your hyper burn for this event. Correct. Yeah. So I just okay. got to 260 a couple days ago. Okay. And you're trying to are, are you like pretty actively playing? Are you trying to like like because this one is still in... Is this one still in Raindor now, or are you trying to get it promoted to the main guild? Yeah, well, yeah, I was actually thinking about that today. I don't... Or I guess I probably should bump up. But, uh, yeah, I, I've been kind of on and off over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I've played the game since it came out, so I'm just... I'm pretty inconsistent, but... Gotcha. Yeah, for the last couple of months, I've been... Or well, really, like, the last month or so, I've been playing every day and mm -hmm. trying to get my dailies in and my weeklies, so... Yeah, that's how they get you, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think you know I've just been enjoying it a lot because of all the the free stuff they've been handing out with the most recent events. Yeah, the 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 value for your time is like you get a really high perception of the value for your time because there's just so much stuff going on, especially in the summer and the winter events. There's so much that they're piling on, uh, yeah. and our winter events tend to be kind of cracked because in Korea they make their summer events really big, and then we get those in the next winter, so our winter events are usually just so much free stuff. I don't know if you saw the oh, okay. road roadmap as well, right, with the stuff that's coming? Yeah. Like, there's also so much stuff, and like for your Legion, like growing your Legion from where you're at towards 8k, it's gonna be great for that as well, so. Cool. Yeah, that's kind of one of my yeah. long-term goals as well, but I, mm -hmm. it seems like 6k to 8k is gonna take longer than 1 to 6k, honestly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it takes longer, but if you know you know the the shortcuts and you know like the easy ways and capitalizing on that so that's mainly like events and um yeah mainly events if you use those properly for your characters like the ones you the characters you like you can just level by themselves the characters you, you don't like you kind of like brute force them depending on what kind of currency you have available in the event and depending on how far you want to get the characters right if you want to get them to 200 or to 210 or you know in the 170 something and then that's enough kind of thing um, as long as you know for every character like where you want to roughly get them, then yeah, whenever an event comes, you'll immediately be like, oh cool, there's a growth potion, it's cool that uh, character number one, two, three, and four, boom, that's where the potions go, you know, or like oh there's a Terra burning area coming, cool, that's that character because I want that character to either 200 or to 210, and I don't really want to train it at all, so boom, that's gonna get a Terra burning So as long as you're familiar with the type of events that are coming and you know where your characters want to go and whether you like them or not, then you can immediately capitalize on uh, on events to, and then yeah that'll you know you might not be immediately 8k but you know that you're going to get there eventually as long as you just keep up with stuff right yeah, yeah i'm kind of new to all the events stuff. i used to just mm -hmm. i mean honestly just kind of log in and just play for fun and i would just kind of ignore the events <laughs> yeah. for the most part so that this is all kind of new to me all the free stuff there definitely have been events where it was mostly like cosmetic or you would get like potions, you know, <laughs> if you're yeah. talking about like 15 years ago, um, like the, the the Thanksgiving event would be like, oh, yeah, now the monsters like drop mashed potato and gravy, right? Oh, and yeah. You, you, don't, <laughs> you don't use as many potions. And then maybe there's like a, you can create like the cranberry sauce, which was like a magic attack buff or something. Uh, but that's about it. You know, it's more like a cosmetic thing and it's an overhaul and it's cute. But now, yeah, it's really centered around like how can we give you even more value for your time and especially once they get feedback in korea when it's like okay this is more value but you're making us do a whole extra stuff they're trying to combine like giving more value for the things that people are already doing and also making them do just a little bit extra that's not too over the top so it's like oh you just click login everyone can do that right 
uh, killing a thousand monsters near your level. Most people can do that if you just do your dailies. Like that's already calculated into that as well. But the main thing that they changed with this event compared to all the previous ones is that the we would usually get something like the basic exploration, right? Which this is already quite elaborate as well. It's a lot of stuff if you add all of this up together. But mm -hmm. then all of the stuff that's in the in-depth exploration, all of that stuff would typically just be in the shops and you'd have to like choose what you buy. You'd be able to buy a lot of it, but you have to kind of choose what you buy with the sunlight coins. Right now I've been, I bought out some stuff that's useful in sunlight coin uh, shop and I bought a lot of those extra, those VIP buffs, right? Those are really cool. Yeah. Because um, in the past they would I I have, like out, a, yeah, exactly. And their weekly they come back, like in the past they would have like event buffs in a map and you have to go there at a certain time to get the buff. But now they just sell the VIP buffs instead so you can more freely use them. And you have plenty of event currency to be able to use them. Maybe if you're playing like 16 different characters, you know, and you're playing all day, yeah. you will run out, of course. But there's a reasonable amount uh, that you can get. But so what they did is they took a lot of the items that you usually would have to just buy with the event currency. And they just gave it them for free for the in-depth exploration. Plus, they also did, instead of making everything either, you know, once a day or once a week... They put a lot of stuff in three times a week instead so that you don't have to do it every single day. And also, since it is a three times a week thing, if you do miss one time in a week, it's not as big of a hit, essentially. So yeah. to make it more casual friendly. And then on top of that, for the general game, they've moved a lot of EXP away from the hardcore grinding, at least you know on the lower end. Once you get very high at the higher level areas, the monsters there give a lot of EXP. But they... They condense way more EXP into the dailies for the symbols and uh, the Tenebris dailies and the Grandest dailies and then Monster Park Extreme and stuff, right? If you do those dailies, you can still keep leveling at like an okay pace as long as you just play a little bit every day. Because that's what they want. They don't want people to come in and play for like a month and then disappear for 10 months and then come for the next uh, or for, for four months and then come back for the next season, right? And then play for a month. They want people to play with regularity so i guess they got you in that way right <laughs> they got you yeah. playing regularly now um, yeah i'm pretty irregular for the most part but yeah mm -hmm. i've been trying to be more regular mm -hmm. yeah it's not uh, like you yeah. have to but you're feeling the value from from being regular right for sure yeah but yeah it's like i think for a long time i didn't really have any goals and then like a few months back i did cra for the first time mm -hmm. which I, sounds dumb but yeah that was kind of like a eye-opener that there's a lot more to do in this game than just grind so yeah. I've been enjoying it a lot more since then because I don't like just like grinding for hours. I like to mm -hmm. do the bosses and that, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and the problem is you kind of have to grind for a long time, especially if you want to do higher level bosses. Because if you don't have the level, yeah. you just you can't even get in. So, well, I like the dailies problems. and stuff like that. It <coughs> makes it feel like you're logging in for a short amount of time. You're making like still a good amount of progress. Yeah, for the yeah for just that time, it's an insane amount for sure. Um, okay, so so you're just kind of taking it like one boss at a time, just trying to get to do the next boss like you said mentioned normal lucid i think yeah so well yeah so actually uh or easy I, oh, no, easy lucid i haven't yeah. i mm -hmm. barely done anything like in uh when i had like the coaching session planned i was like i should try damien and lotus because i mm -hmm. never actually tried them and uh i beat them both on my first try so i don't know mm -hmm. I, I think that uh maybe i was a little bit too scared you know <laughs> and maybe there's a little bit more i could do because like yeah maybe is easy lucid already kind of like possible for me with my current gear and level and everything like that um so yeah just like possible so you're trying to do everything kind of like solo as long as you can or yeah. does it not matter i kind of do i like the challenge of kind of like learning the fight and everything and i've heard mm -hmm. that you can do easy lucid solo mm -hmm. um not too bad so then you can kind of get into normals like with a group yeah. and stuff so i kind of like to do that um for right now but yeah i do like soloing as much as i can for sure mm -hmm. yeah you should be able to like normal slime would be like the nest boss to try oh and that okay. should be like within the range definitely as well and then easy lucid is like right after that it's very similar to normal lucid it's got about half the hp but a bunch of the skills don't hit quite as hard so you're a bit more forgiving of a boss fight but oh, it's gonna be catchy Quite well. a, Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, so a catchy is usually a little bit before. So I've got the dailies command, right? So kind of mm -hmm. like order them there in terms of like what I, when I would check the next boss and when that roughly would be, like around what level. Of course, you know, if you're doing a hyper burn, you're like leveling super fast, then your gear has to play catch up for like the next yeah. 10 to 15 levels. Um, but the... Um, 
So I would say that Akechi would be a little bit under like Lotus and Damien, kind of like oh, okay. more together with like where where um, Chaos Papalatus is. Okay, so I could probably just one shot him, no problem. Yeah, just yeah. Well, he has two bodies, Remember? so Combo. and a long animation oh, okay. in between, so you wouldn't be able to one shot. But yeah, you'd be able to if you do like half a burst on one body, half a burst on the other, you should die pretty quickly. Yeah. The other thing is just also like the power, the raw power spike you get from just unlocking the origin skill is immense, right? Yeah, so. that was crazy for sure. Mm -hmm. So okay, I should start doing that every week then. Yeah. So we got normal, easy, easy lucid here. Yeah, I've got it set up like two thirty-five plus, but that's that's around when people start doing things like with parties rather than solo. Is once lucid comes in, she's just really built for party because you got like you know cleansing, you got to do callouts, you got to look at multiple sides of the map. Doing that oh, alone okay. is, is quite a, is quite a bit harder to do. But if you can manage pretty decently solo, then you're definitely ready to go into normal parties and like your damage is is like the in between where people who know exactly what they're doing. If you put like six people with, uh, if you, you know, if your stat is good and all, uh, six people with that kind of damage and who have 260 of origins together, you could probably do hard lucid. Oh, okay. So you, so you do Just jump difficulties like very, yeah, yeah. You just jump difficulties very quickly in the beginning. Okay. All right, yeah. that's good to know. This is this daily's command is pretty helpful, actually. Yeah. I'll, that's why a lot of people kind of don't bother with those bosses because they know. Or they've heard like the, the bosses are pretty close together, so they'll just wait until they have more damage. And so they'll kind of have the same experience as you, but not with the same intent. <laughs> like they won't really be uh, scared of the boss, they just feel like it's not worth their time until they're stronger, and then they can just come back and blow it up later, and then get oh, the okay. money more easily, and then just not have that struggle in the same way. Because if you, at this point, because of how quickly you can progress in the game, if you really want that struggle for those lower level bosses, you have to pretty much do them like in the week that you get access to them because if you wait like a week you're already going to be so overpowered that, that it's already going to be like a joke of a boss fight kind of but for yeah. you know lotus and damien you got all you've always got hard lotus and hard damien to look forward to which are oh, okay. kind of like the real boss fights i guess so that's that's a quite a bit further especially if you're trying to solo those that's quite a bit further um but um well i say that but like being able to completely solo there's probably people around your stat who do like hard lotus to if you have like all the buffs going on to see if you can like kill it within half an hour um many people probably can do that if you have like the mechanical skill and you know you have like a lot of buffs and you got event buffs and stuff like that so that could be like a challenge that you could do if you feel like a lotus was like really easy probably really fast right oh uh yeah for me mm -hmm. yeah yeah lotus was easy i feel like damien was uh easier honestly i don't know if that's just saw somebody say that it might just be a class thing but yeah because yeah. like he's in the air a lot as damien but um i've said mechanically damien is easier but lotus only gives you um well mechanically once you get like the hang of it um like damien is probably easier and has 10 lives so it's just a little weird <laughs> um yeah. but uh and lotus only gives five lives but lotus also becomes quite a bit harder for the hard difficulty and damien doesn't really damien just has um yeah damien just has way more hp and then if he dives down and on you that could actually like kill you but that's oh, okay. kind, that's kind of it but lotus just all the skills do way more damage uh like lasers one shot you and all that so you can't really yeah. get away with anything plus there's just way more stuff falling from the sky so on all of that combined makes it quite a bit harder to do uh, Lotus, yeah. So that's why people go pretty high on the damage because they want to have a higher level of, of success rate, you know, going into it that they know they're not potentially going to die out. Gotcha. Yeah, the Lotus, it was the knockback for me. I don't know, that's, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. It just knocks you into everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things that's good to start learning on Lotus is like kiting. Are you familiar with that concept? Yeah. Yeah, so you you really want to like bait out the attacks and try to fight on the edge of the hitbox because what mm -hmm. Lotus will do is as soon as you walk into like the pixel of the hitbox, he'll push. So if you keep your distance, you'll be able to just walk one pixel back and then walk one pixel front again and nothing will hit you, but your timing yeah. has to be on point. And especially when stuff is falling uh, from the ceiling and you want to be able to control where lotus is and what he's able to hit so sometimes by dodging things early you can actually allow lotus to walk up to you and then push you into other stuff whereas walking into him mm. first 
baiting out an attack so he doesn't get to move and he stays in place might actually be better in ways of dodging. So that's just things that you'll learn uh, as you're in a boss fight. And you're probably going to get just like destroyed, especially if you start trying to do hard Lotus. Because you know those really big things yeah. that fall, like the demolishizers? Yeah. The ones that one shot you, yeah. Yeah, those one shot. Sometimes there's like three of them coming down at the same time in hard Lotus. Oh, and then, like, so you have to iframe right it or something? Well, you just have to stand in between everything. You got to like up jump oh, okay. properly wherever you can. Um, this is also, and Lucid is, is the same, is when you start using Blink more. Uh, might not oh, okay, I have yeah. that, but I mm -hmm. I don't use it. Probably I never used wondered. it. Yeah, is it but for if the you float? use, it... yeah, and you so you can stay in the air longer, and you can That's even fine. go up a little bit. But also, if you get hit by something, um, you'll just get like stunned in the air, but you won't fall. So if something oh, does okay. hit you that doesn't one shot yeah. you, you can tank it and stay in the air, and you won't immediately fall into like a bunch of other stuff. So with this, you yeah. can essentially like dodge lotus lasers if there's no platform at all. Like if you accidentally destroy it, or lotus is right on top of it, and it's super scary to go over there, right? Um, yeah. That kind of stuff. And then for lucid, if you're stuck kind of in the middle of the map in between the golems, which will happen usually in the beginning because you don't have enough damage to and constantly attack a lucid and kill all the golems maybe with all your summons you can do a decent job mm -hmm. though of controlling the fight a bit more uh but then if the dragon comes from the side shoots a giant beam if you can see the dragon you can see it winding up the breath as long as you go up and you glide on your corsair it's like it's like you have to be near pixel perfect but you can technically do it with just an up jump and a glide because i could do the same thing with my demon avenger but um if you have blink it's so much easier because you can even go up, up in the air. I've got a little uh, YouTube short oh, okay. I made about that as well. That you, how you can use oh. Blink in uh, in Lucid runs, and because when the golems fall in Lucid, they have like a really high vertical hitbox above them. And, like you can't just jump over them; that'll deal damage to you. So in easy and normal, you kind of can because they don't deal full damage. But if you do it in hard, you'll just get one shot if you try to just jump over them. So you have to either kill them or go like all like basically stick yourself to the top of the map as you're flying over them and if you like up jump and yeah. glide up then you can actually get to the top and kind of get away from them and then just fall right next to them and kill them because if you'd fall right on top of them you'd take a lot of damage from them so right. blink is pretty much unused until you get to like this point uh and then you can you can start seeing a lot of uses for it in this uh even because of the knockdown resistance even if you're like panicking you don't want to get knocked back you could even just jump blink in the air and take like tank the hit from lotus's push and not get pushed back you'll like be a little bit dazed but at least you'll stay in place rather than get knocked into you know whatever nightmare <laughs> is happening behind you that could otherwise yeah. kill you so it opens up a bunch of options mm -hmm. sure. yeah and it's a really good habit to get into like the kiting and really getting used to like how far of a range is dangerous from a boss versus not because a lot of bosses in the future will have the same thing where you 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 want to get to know what that range is uh, really well. You kind of get to learn that with um, with like Clown a little bit, right? Because you can yeah. like push you with that umbrella. Like that's never good because it's a lot of damage. And then you could get hit by a hat and then you're stuck under that. And then you start spitting on top of you, right? Um, but if you do the bosses yeah. when you already you know, have six job or you're already like 25k stat, those boss mechanics won't... Uh, won't really hurt you that much anymore but if you go back ever on another character that's like you know 8k stat or something that could technically kill it but a longer boss fight then being able to translate the other experience from the other bosses to um the previous ones because that's the other tab i have under here where it says by value this used to have a bunch of stuff like the drops and everything but that's all under the maple guide now so it kind of took those away because that's okay. less that's less uh, work for me to keep that all up to date. But I've also yeah. got like a bossing experience relevance thing here, which basically indicates like is learning this boss fight going to help you in the game like with other bosses or with other aspects in the game because some bosses mechanics are just so stupid like princess note like if you could do princess yeah. note really well that doesn't translate to anything else. So, you know, you don't have to spend so much time on there. But there are some other boss fights, especially the later ones where you will see aspects of a boss be like, hey, I learned this already from this other boss. And subconsciously, you'll be adapting to it already. And that will help you like filter out what your attention is required for. And you'll be able to learn the new boss fight way faster than other people who just either got carried or this is their first real boss fight. They'll just feel like everything's coming at them at the same time and they don't know what to prioritize. But if you like subconsciously get better at, at certain bosses, like Lotus and Damien, especially and, like bosses after that, you'll 
already be adapting to certain things, you'll take away a bunch of the obstacles from the boss fight already and you'll be able to focus better on the things that are, you know, trying to actively be like new hindrances that you need to work on essentially. Okay. Slime irrelevant then? <laughs> yeah, it's got like its own little mini game and everything. Um Oh no. Learning learning timing <laughs> is uh, learning timing is good for it. Um but it's got like giant beams that can stun you. I guess those beams come back in other boss fights, but um yeah, it's got like a mini game where you like kick some rocks to block a portal and then and then there's like slimes that are sliding down and you have to slide them down through the same portal if if the slimes are green, but if they're gold through another portal and then and then he comes back stunned. That's the thing that a lot of bosses do have, that if you have some kind of test mechanic and you do it correctly, then the boss kind of like self-stuns. Not like an actual bind, right? But like he just stays there dazed a little bit so you can just wait Oh, yeah. On him. I and think um, yeah. Bon Bon has that, right? Yep, yep. Bon Bon has that, okay. exactly. And Will will have that. Slime has that. Um, like Carlos has that. A lot of the later okay. bosses have that. And you, uh, but in Slime's case, you deal a lot of bonus damage to the boss in that moment. So that is the moment oh, that you okay. want to you want to strike and really like get your burst in there. So for the planning, you know that the test happens every three minutes as long as you do it properly. If you're a three minute burst class, then every three minutes you'll be able to totally unload on him. So you also know that if your burst is coming up, but the test timer is soon, that you want to make sure you don't use your burst, but save it, do the test, and then right after, then wail on him, and then you deal like twenty percent extra final damage or something while he's like self stunned and then when he gets out of that because it's not a stun then you can bind him after that and basically it. have an even longer time yeah or use your origin after that right be immune to the lasers that are coming and just sit in your uh sit in your iframe origin skill and then after that bind him so you essentially have like 30 seconds that you can undisrupted like you can wail on him and do damage and once you have liberated weapon you could do another 10 seconds so you have 40 seconds where you're just like attacking yeah and that's kind of where the, cool. the 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 higher level of like the meta for you personally for bosses comes in. Some bosses that have tests like that that have certain timers that have once you start doing gloom for example that's like closed most of the time doesn't take any damage and then opens at certain intervals and certain percentages. That's like bosses that you definitely just have to try because you have to see how strong you are to see like do I do like a double burst here like you know do I not have enough damage to focus or to force the boss to go into the next phase? Should I hold my damage instead? Um, you know, because sometimes dealing damage too quickly means that it's your skills might be on cooldown for the next one and then you run into trouble in the next phase, right? So it might be yeah. suboptimal. So that's like, but that's like the higher level when you're, when you're able to do it. But sometimes if you're really close, doing it in a smarter way might actually mean that your character can actually do it, but just not in that way. But you will have learned already so much from survivability, from the you know the rhythm of the attacks. How long are the attacks? Where can you stand? Where should you not stand? Right, and that's just a bunch of dying and just learning from that. So that's I like that a lot about the game. If someone hasn't died a lot enough, to, uh, like a lot to a boss yet, that means you just need to go in more. You know. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. But I I get the the hesitancy of like I have no idea if I even have like a fighting chance at all or if this is like something that's reasonable for me to try. So that's why I have the dailies command and then the progression command. Those are like the two big ones where progression kind of wants to keep track of like, what kind of stats do you want around your level to make sure that your level is a decent indicator for how far in the game you are and where you want to be spending your time in terms of upgrading. And then the dailies command is like, as long as you're somewhat following the progression command and you're like within those margins, then you can use the dailies command to see what stuff around your level is, I think, worth your time and worth considering, and what stuff might be a little bit, you know, size too, okay. size too big, basically. So I got, I do have a question. So my attack mm -hmm. power is only thirteen hundred on my main, and you say mm -hmm. two sixty, you want at least two k. Is there? Where's? Mm -hmm. Where am I missing all this attack from? Seven hundred attack. If is that yeah, just so a the class thing or? Uh, it could be class thing, like the earlier you are, again, the bigger the differences could be between... Because I could have a character, like I'm on my hero right now, who's level 252. Uh -huh. um, my I'm at uh, 4,407, so, you know, okay. there, <laughs> there goes your predictive power of your level, right? Yeah. Um, some level 250s could be 7 years old, and some level 260s could be a week old, so... There's a huge gap there, um, but that could be something to to look into to see if you're not missing something glaringly. So that 
that it's good that you mentioned that, so I'll definitely keep that in mind. Um, okay. But it's near impossible to put like a perfect number on there that fits everyone and doesn't make anyone feel like that's a little high or that's a little low, right? Yeah. Um, I if you're if you're fifty, you're like you're around fifteen hundred and it says two thousand, you're not like it's not like you're at eight hundred because then it's like okay, you know <laughs> something's yeah, <laughs> something's like way off. But yeah, f you're like a, th a quarter off, so that is something to definitely be wary of, and it is possible. Um, if I had to guess, um, potential on your weapon secondary and emblem probably doesn't have as many lines of percentage attack, if I had to guess. Yeah, for sure not, yeah. And that's where that's probably where a really big difference comes from, because if you don't have that much percentage attack, then a single line will make a huge difference in the total amount, in percentage-wise. So that, that's okay. probably where that comes in. But it is possible that you have a whole bunch of boss and IED on there, and you have no trouble mobbing, so that your setup actually gives you more damage, even though your attack is a bit lower. That is possible. Uh, definitely not, because as soon as I got to the uh, 260 zone, I, I stopped one-shotting, so... Mm -hmm. Cernium, but yeah. Yeah, but so that's a... Get a little yeah. bit more damage out. That's a wall that you're hitting, for sure, especially now, because they just drag you to 260, like kicking and screaming yeah. like i want to be <laughs> i want to do cra on my own level no you're going to sertium um and then you're there yeah. and it's like oh yeah now you need sacred power these monsters and remember like, these monsters have been already nerfed quite a bit in terms of their hp because of the reboot non-reboot difference oh. uh yeah they used to have way more exp and uh, hp but the people who got there got there more smoothly you know now it's like boom you get dragged by your hair to 260 and now here you go, kill these monsters, and especially for very new players, it's it's really rough, yeah. Yeah, I imagine most people are a lot lower than two sixty when they first clear Damien and Lotus. So yeah, so people who that. yeah, so if you do it like right on the levels where you can get access to it, so if you want to relate it more to like a boss mule or something, you could probably get boss mules anywhere from between like two twenty and two thirty. Can start doing Lotus and Damien probably. But okay. that's with like all of the knowledge of the mechanics. That's with all of the knowledge of how do you fund a character, and like mm -hmm. basically specifically designing the character purely for bossing as well. So if you know your intent for your character and you know where your funding needs to go, you can be way more precise and way more efficient in the amount of money and time that you spend on a character. But you need your first character to kind of you know to kind of roll through to get a, a feeling for like how strong do I need to be? You know how hard are these bosses actually? And, yeah, uh, and that was kind of yeah. my plan with the burning was get this guy up to 260 and then kind of see what I could do and mm -hmm. see so if you yeah, still like it. Know. If you want to keep going, you know <laughs> that's also. Well, I, I love the Corsair. I don't think I. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to keep this character as my main, but yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd like maybe like to have some mules to support. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what's coming in. Uh, uh, you know, Korea said yeah. that we're changing a lot with like where money is coming from. We're already a lot of people are already set up with a very strong. A, you know, in account economy of getting really good bossing mules and all of that. So as long as we keep building on that, we should have a good time keeping our money up. But yeah, we'll we'll see what they do because it's a lot of a lot of question marks right now. But it's just something to keep an eye on, but not really let it determine every single decision you're making right now. Uh, but yeah. yeah, as we know more, hopefully we can kind of use that in our favor. You know. Yeah, I'm I'm not super worried about all that right now until we see mm -hmm. changes here. So. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm aware of everything going on, so... Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, yeah, so... You can see... Yeah, so we've got one solid line of attack on all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but just all prime lines, so that's nice. So that's 36. Um, but yeah, you can imagine someone who has like 50 to 60% instead of attack, right? Then the total attack will already go up by a whole amount. That's why those lines are just so sexy and just so useful. Yeah. It's just crazy how much it costs, like, when I put it in the calc. <laughs> mm -hmm. To get, like, a 24% or something like that, or 18% yeah. even. Yeah, you've ever been playing around with the calculators? Yeah, there's definitely... Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's... Uh, but, th yeah, and th I guess that brings us into um, a good topic, is, like, kind of, like, realizing which upgrade makes sense to do and which upgrades don't make sense to do. Because you'll see people who have, like... You know, all of their stuff is like 11 star, uh, like epic yeah. or something. And then they'll have like a legendary weapon that's like two line attack, one line boss. And it'd be like, okay, that weapon is really good. But if you took, and then you, they spent like average on it. If you took like, you know, 80% of the money on the weapon and settled for something that was just 20% of as good as this and spent the other 80% on like your other stuff. 
then your whole character would be doing like three times the damage you're doing now. Um, yeah. It, 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 Maple Story is very much a game of like knowing which pieces give you the damage and going for it. But it's also, um, once you've got the initial, you know, your set completed, it's really a matter of like bringing everything up evenly, but not evenly in terms of numbers, but evenly in terms of cost efficiency kind of thing. And mm -hmm. you, yeah, that's where the calculators come in and are super uh, clutch because <laughs> I can't calculate all those numbers. I don't know if you can, but throw the numbers in and just tell me what, tell me what to do, calculator. You know, just yeah, informed decisions. That's that's what I'm getting to. That's it puts like the decision into a totally different perspective kind of when you're actually mm -hmm. looking at how much it's going to physically cost you. Yeah. And to see if it's even reasonable to want something, right? Be like, oh, if someone else has that. I want that too. And then you see yeah. how much it's going to cost. It'd be like, or <laughs> I remember this one time someone in the chat was like, why is your... um." Why are your secondary or emblem not thirty percent magic attack? And I'm like, well, because I don't have that kind of, I don't have like hundred and forty bill lying around. And he's like, yeah. oh, I use like fourteen cubes and I got it on both. Th I thought it was very cheap. I was like, well, <laughs> I'm here to tell you that you were really, 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 really lucky because it definitely is not that cheap. Like, oh, okay, and that puts things into perspective as well. Because how is he supposed to know? He just cubed a little bit and got it right. Like, <laughs> that was me that. until like a yeah. few months ago, honestly. So I, like, I, I kind of just played. I didn't like look mm -hmm. anything up or any so i've been trying to learn everything i've been missing out on recently i have like some questionable purchases like my horn tail earrings or legendary potential <laughs> mm -hmm. so and maybe some i could have spent that a little bit better so i don't know yeah and but i mean overall there's still like small if, if even if there are a mistake they're a small mistake and then with some with a session like this you can also see like how can we bend that to it being like a positive instead of a negative right and also yeah. for every next character that you're gonna do you can also know that then decisions like that that you make are just conscious decisions and not just like well let's see what happens but more like i want to get this and how am i going to do that but uh -huh. To the extent that you want to, right? I don't want to restrict you too much. If you just like enjoy the game a lot by just like kind of like fucking around, and if you make a mistake here or there, it's like whatever. Then that's fine by me too. Like that's why I like. Uh, uh, that's why I have don't have like a restrictive guide on like day one do this, day five do that. Um, because I like to give people that freedom. Because that's the way I like playing games too. I like fucking up a little bit in the beginning when there's like yeah. low pressure. Um, I kind of keep it. You know, low. Okay, uh, keep it low pressure as long as possible. Keep it fun as long as possible. But overall, yeah, try to I keep it fun that. the whole way through. Yeah, I get that for sure. Okay, so you are at the point. Uh, or are there any like topics? I guess that we tangentially talked about, or that you had thought about, where you just don't know anything about it, and you want some more information on it. Uh, I, I, I think I have a pretty solid grasp on most of the mechanics as far as mm -hmm. i'm aware so maybe yeah just looking at some efficiencies more like i have some things like i have like a, a superior gallic's belt that i just randomly got super luckily mm -hmm. off a drop That's and that, i yeah. just have it equipped with no stars like no so i because i don't know what to do with it right now because like mm -hmm. i there's the 5 10 15 uh star force event coming up and i've been doing a lot of research what's the best way to get you know the best bang for my buck i've been seeing mm -hmm. a lot of people say that it's pretty safe to go for seven or it's usually best to go for 17 star because it's kind of like just like really safe you get that 16 and then you go right up to 17 so I'm yeah you safeguard that like, last star but you star. yeah you get straight up there and there's there's no more risk involved right because you can safeguard up to 17 that's why that's such a milestone that you'll see everywhere because there's it's just money that you're spending but there's zero risk involved up to 17 as long as you remember to click that little safeguard button <laughs> and not accidentally like, get a trace with the Gallics, like, is it going to mm -hmm. be... It's a super rare item, or maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm misunderstanding, but, like, do I want to, like, wait? Because I have, like, a gold clover belt I'm going to mm -hmm. transfer hammer over. Do I want to wait until I have, like, you know, like a 21 star? I mean, obviously, that's, like, ridiculously expensive, but should I hold mm -hmm. on to the superior Gallics, or should I... Because I also have, like, a reinforced Gallics belt, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of, like, not really sure what's the vibe with that. I know the, the reinforced Gallics ring is supposedly best in slot, so I was planning on buying that first. And since I already have the other two pieces, I was thinking maybe just go for the reinforced set. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of paths, right? There's not like one exactly. specific So depending on how quick you're going and how many pieces you have, whatever is optimal might be changing in your um, in how you get from point A to point B. Um, 
one thing I do want to mention that just because something is best in slot, even though I guess technically reinforced will fall out of best in slot if you get far enough. Um, oh, okay. Is, um, yeah, because you'll have Oz Ring, Superior Ring, most likely, and then you have a Endless uh, Terror, the Pitch Ring, and then you have the Slime Ring. Those will be, okay. those will all end up better. The thing with, whenever you are sharing resources, you have to look at all your options, right? So everything is sharing mezzo, so you look at what is the cost of a potential, what is the cost of star forcing, right? When you get to doing Golic stuff, the reinforced, especially if you have to buy the piece, now you're sharing resources, you're sharing resources with your superior set, right? Yeah. Uh, because you have to buy, two pieces can drop, and the other two pieces can, you have to buy from the shop, you're aware of that? Uh, I actually did not know that. So mm -hmm. the I'm guessing it's the uh, the pendant, and then what? What's the other one? I don't have the earring. What is it? Earrings? No, well, I you've already the... gotten two as a drop, so you know which two drop, yeah. right? So it's the earrings and yeah, the belt no drop, ear. and then the other two, the the pendant oh, the and ring the ring and the pendant. Yeah, okay, ring yes, and the pendant. Right. Those you have to buy with coins. Okay, I was not aware of that. Yeah. Well, now you know. So if you look at the the cost. Um, for the pieces, so superior is 700 each. So ideally, roughly, if you are running the boss long enough to get to 1,400 coins to be able to buy your two pieces, usually around that time, you also got one of the other two as a drop. So one belt and one earring. Some people get it, you know, on the first run, they get a double drop, and then some people get it, like, on the very last. And decent amount of people, probably, like, I would say probably, like, 15 to 20% of people don't get their two drops within, and they have to keep going. Uh, hopefully, they... Most of them will get the drop before they can afford the third piece. And some people have to buy their third piece with coins as well. Um, so for reinforced ring, I usually don't bother with it. Um, no, oh, okay. Like, not even after you've bought all the pieces. You want to get, especially if you know it's your main character, you want to get far with this character. You want to be able to buy your superior pieces as soon as possible and switch into superior Golics. So okay. that's like one of the things that you're trying to aim for. Um, Superior Golic set completion is basically your green light to switch from an accessory set that mostly has drop rate and meso obtain on it and switches into one where you build a whole set specifically for bossing and then leave the other set for drop and meso only when you're mobbing anymore instead of just wearing it all the time, essentially. Yeah, i kind of been... I, I, it's something I've been wanting to do but it's, it's a huge investment to go for like a drop mm -hmm. and mess up that so i don't really i it guess is. now's maybe the time or, or should i wait until do people usually wait until they're a little bit higher level to do that so in general i do it once i know that i'm going to be playing that character for a considerable amount of time oh okay. because as soon as i know that then i start investing in drop mezzo set because you will start earning back the money from the because of the mezzo you'll earn that money back really quickly and then with the drop mostly what you'll see is you'll just see more backups drop and if you get more backups it just gives you more options of upgrade paths so um to circle back all the way to your initial question like what do i do with the superior belt um in your situation um I would probably be investing first in like drop and meso gear and getting all of that completed and probably letting like a 5, 10, 15 slide if I'm that limited on money because oh, wow. okay. all of that money going into drop and meso will mean that by the next time an event comes around, not only will your daily income and your weekly income have gone up because you're just making more money while you're training, but also you'll have more items that you can have as options and backups are money in a way. Because if you look at the calculator and you do like, okay, I only have one piece, I need to safeguard, that's a lot more expensive, right? Especially if you're going past 17 stars, it gets really expensive if you're safeguarding all the time from 15 to 17. Even if you're waiting for a 5, 10, 15, always from 16 to 17, that gets expensive. But if you get a lot of backups, even if you calculate in the booms, you'll earn money by having more backups because you can take the risk of not having to safeguard. But you get those backups by having drop rate and by killing the bosses. And the way I mentioned it last time that someone said that was really eye-opening is you have limits on dailies and weeklies, right? So once you're hitting those limits, there's no way to go past that. So what you want to do is get more value from those dailies and weeklies the way that you do it with monsters. Like if you're killing all the monsters in a map, you're done, right? 
But mm -hmm. what we can do is you can get more mezzo obtained so that when they do drop money, they drop more. Or when they do drop equips, that's mostly for bossing. Like if if you kill one boss, but you have 200% drop rate, it's like you're killing two bosses worth, right? Or, yeah. well, we don't know exactly what the multiplier is because the game is very untransparent, but that's a whole other topic. Um, but this way you can kind of take put multiple weeks into a single week and you can make plans that sometimes take two years or three years actually just take like a few months instead and because your time is so valuable right and that's why drop rate becomes so important and i know in the beginning it seems like a detour especially because you're leveling so quickly and even with damage on your accessories and everything it's already hard to keep up with the kill speed but yeah. the faster you get into the drop rate and the mesoptain the faster that will earn itself back and the faster you'll start getting backups and the second thing that backups do is they show you where the lowest risk is. And up to 17, you're right, you know, going up to 17, that's definitely something that you want to eventually do. And you can do it pretty risk free. And a 5, 10, 15 event is great for that. And you'll be at 17 everything for quite a bit. But as soon as an event comes around and you'll see like, oh, I've got like 20, 25 backups for like CRA pieces, I can easily send that past uh, 17. Even if it booms a few times, it's really low risk, right? Maybe by that time you have like four or five kind of treasure rings. You'd be like, oh, I can definitely, like, you know, the, the odds of one making it to 19 are super high. So now I can reasonably make this upgrade. What happens if you don't have mezzo and drop rate? You'll still make a decent amount of money because you're training. You'll maybe kill some bosses, have a boss mule. Maybe you have like five bill and you'll have like one backup, two backups. And it's like... Now everything becomes like, ooh, like what do I do? Do I like see if I can get an 18, if I can get away with that? Do I stop at 18 now? Because the risk from 18 to 19 is too high, right? Now mm -hmm. all of your upgrade all of your upgrade jumps become smaller and as a return they become less efficient. Especially, again, to go back full circle to the belt, especially if you're talking about transfer hammering over, right? You're not gonna yeah. do, okay, 18 golden clover to transfer into 17 superior. Because you might as well just safeguard the superior from 16 to 17 and have a 17, right? Approaching yeah. it from the bottom is always is like cheaper than approaching it from the top if it's going to stay on the same item. But like you're not going to go then, okay, 19 bell to transfer into an 18 to gain one star. It's very expensive to always go up two stars to gain one, right? Because then you're doing it for half the money. So you want to do those big jumps. So what does that generally come down to is that first you just make way in the beginning you just have 10 and 11 star or lower stuff and that's fine um then you go into 17 star stuff and then usually if you are transfer hammering the next step is like you said like 21 or in some cases 22 but this will depend on how how fast you're going where you want your character to get to right what i said in the beginning if this character's purpose is i'm going to be bossing i'm going to be doing lotus and damien I know roughly how strong you need to be for for Hard Lotus and Damien, for example, which means look, I can technically do it around 25k stat, but I want pretty fast runs. I'm going to get closer to like 40k stat because then I can do it very comfortably and a lot of other bosses. Um, so I know how strong I need to roughly be. It's very cheap, very... It's cheap, very efficient to go like 21 Golden Clover Belt into 20 Superior. I'm okay setting on 20 Superior. I don't need to risk anything. I have one belt and that's good enough and then everything is 20 and I'm strong enough, then, you know, you could do 21. What some people might do is they wait until they have a second belt, their first one is on 17, and then they'll make a 21 Golden Clover belt, transfer that to the second belt, try to tap the second belt to 21. If it doesn't go, you can still wear your original belt. If it does go, you can upgrade the other one, and then your 17 star belt can become a backup for much later if you're going for 22 stars. And that kind of circles back as well to the coins when you're sharing backups, if you dedicate some of your coins early on to a reinforced ring to get a slightly stronger ring in there, you're also slowing down your per you're initially slowing down your purchasing of the superior gear, which means you're slowing down your completion of your damage set, which means you're slowing down your kill speed on the higher level bosses, right? And you're for after that you're slowing down getting backups potentially getting from 20 to 21 on pieces and l behind that getting from 21 to 22 on things you're slowing that whole process down by gaining like a little bit of stat on the on the ring so for rings usually what i want to focus on more is like yeah you get the superior but just use those event rings abuse the hell out of those event rings because they're really strong they're like 17 to 18 star equivalent and they just you don't, don't cost any money right so you can get decent potential on them 
and then that's cool. And then Slime Ring comes, and then Kana Treasure Ring can go to higher Star Force way more reliably than Reinforced, because every single time you have to buy a new Reinforced if you want to go past 17, and that's 400 coins every time. You buy two of them, that's one whole superior item that you lost. Well, it's 450, I think, yeah, so that's like more... Oh, it's like 900 coins, right? If Reinforced yeah. was like 200, this could be a completely different story, right? But because of how the costs are, and, you know... Okay, right on. Yeah. So, initially, it's probably just, even at this stage, you could just transfer already your Golden Clover Belt into the Superior, because Superior has very high base stats. It's a little bit of an exception, right? It's got like 35 attack on it or something. Yeah, it's, it's All, better than the belt, and it's got nothing on it. It's got nothing <laughs> on it, yeah. So, if you just trans, if you look at Transfer Hammer, you can see what the outcome will be. So, you'll see you'll probably have a 6% dex line on top, and 6% MP on the bottom that doesn't do anything. And then the flame will stay what the superior ring a uh, superior belt flame is now yeah which it, it gets crap flames right yeah yeah doesn't have flame advantage and then the star force will go down to nine like you know big whoop um you could very easily pick that back up to 10 or 11 or something um but in general i think working on your drop in mezzo set now if you know for sure that this is a character that you want to stay with because what's going to happen is you're going to increase your chance that by the time you earn your 1400 coins that you've also seen an earring at that point. And then you can move into Superior Golux faster, right? Mm -hmm. You're just giving yourself a better guarantee to stay on point with the things that are time-gated, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I got you. I got, I got a free event ring from the event coming up, so I'll mm -hmm. probably yep. try to get that. Some, to and that's what, yeah. The line on that. And that's why we're, it's good that we started with events, because those are the things as well that can determine, like, do I really need to get another ring, right? Do I really need the reinforce? Is that necessary here? Or can I just get one or two event rings and then some side rings? Because in the end, you're looking at everything as, like, one giant pile of stats, right? If you're trying to min-max and you're trying to best in slot, then you need the best pieces if you want to be the strongest person. But the second strongest person if all they're lacking is instead of a reinforced ring they've got the kind of treasuring then they're lacking i think it's four stat and three weapon attack oh, okay. on and you're looking at progression because it's just the base stats right they're the same level items yeah. so they get the exact same upgrades and potentials and everything so you're looking at okay these people are like seventy thousand stat but this guy has seventy thousand and four or you know with potentials and everything it'll multiply to like seventy thousand and and thirty or something and be like is that a you know, reasonable amount of damage lost at the end. If there's nothing else that can give you damage, I guess, but if that person has like half of a ping more, that's more of a damage difference than the ring is going to be, right? To put it all into into perspective. So is it worth like slowing down your entire progress? I think not. So that's why I also yeah. take a step back from best in slot because best in slot is best in slot, sure. But the next best thing to best in slot could be like one tenth of the effort for like 99% of the damage. That's kind of like the the ugly <laughs> truth behind best in slot that is really hard to put into uh, into the into the eye i guess yeah it's it's kind of it, it's making me think about my my situation with my pendants i've got mm -hmm. the the dominator and then mm -hmm. i also have a chaos horn tail which i i only learned recently that doesn't it doesn't get uh, advantage flames on the horn, chaos horn tail necklace yeah, this is main we used to call them boss flames, uh, but we stepped away from that mainly because of the pendants, because they drop from bosses yeah. and they're part of the boss accessory set, but they did not get boss flames. So we started using different terminology and used flame advantage instead, because it was just a better catch-all for stuff. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. You brought that up, and you talked about the earring as well. But this is very easily salvageable, and that's because we're just going to turn this into drop and meso gear. That mm -hmm. way, all the value of tearing it up is going to get 100% translate it over and you're going to get more money and get more drop rate plus i the great thing so usually what i do is okay first you know a little bit of star forcing cool a uh, little bit of flaming on a weapon but that's pretty much it and then uh, maybe slowly on some boss accessories because you know they have flame advantage that's cool and then once potentials come in okay weapon secondary and emblem just needs to do something needs to do something good and after that immediately up to the accessories because what happens is you jump your accessories from epic to legendary so they have like 6 or 9%. And when they end up at Legendary, what do they have? 6 or 9%. So you don't lose any damage there, but you just net gain all of the utility of drop rate and mezzo, essentially. So you're not getting weaker there. If you do the intermediate jumps first, first to Unique and get some stat on there, of course, because you have a Unique piece, right? And then to Legendary and you try to get some stat and you roll some stat on there. Well, now going 
back down, quote unquote, to drop a mezzo feels bad. And you don't want to have to do that. You don't want to lose your kill potential. But if you never had the kill potential there to begin with, it's a net gain. And you learn to see like, where do you get your kill potential from? Otherwise, so checking the progression grid after the WSE and the potential there and the flame on the weapon, a lot of it comes down from like the nodes, keeping up with your symbol dailies, your mm -hmm. symbol dailies matrix, um, not having horrible flames on stuff like the CRA being built up, the set bonus, getting stuff to 17 stars, all of that stuff will start coming. But if you don't have the foundation of the drop in the mezzo and you start throwing the money there immediately, yeah, in the beginning, you're going to get there quicker. But once you want to do the step after that, going like past 17 star, going to 19, going to 21, those things are going to take forever because yeah. the money is not going to come in as quickly and the backups are just not there. So everything is too risky. You might, you might strike gold and you might actually hit it or you might be what is a more reasonable outcome, someone with just a, bunch, a few traces and just nothing to throw their money at. And then you'll eventually have to go for drop and gear anyway, but then you're behind on the curve on the people who didn't. So you're kind of right on that like crossroads a little bit where you've um, you haven't really gone too far, I think, into like purely going to, into damage. Because again, like the E-ring, if it was 30% dex, we'd have to make a different decision here, right? Yeah. Then probably I would say take a reinforce ring instead, get that drop rate or mezzo on that, use this one for damage. But this one is already legendary, it has just one line. Try to get drop or mezzo and 9% on dex on it. But initially, just drop or mezzo. Boom, you got it. Move to the next item. It's already unique. Nice. That means it only needs one tier up. Um, so what we're mainly going to look at for you is when is the DMT for accessories? January 20th. Again, exactly. And that's really soon, right? <laughs> so yeah. 5, 10, 15 is probably a skip angle for you, which feels bad. Um, yeah. But if, if instead you can get 10 items to legendary or... You know, eight, I guess, because yeah. you have one here, you have nine accessories. You get eight of them to legendary instead of costing you eight bill, only costs you four bill. And you could basically get your whole drop and mezzo set pretty much done, probably with like five to six bill. That's that's great. That's a great opportunity for you to pr basically spend half the money. And then whenever the next event comes around, if it's a 30% off, cool. That means you can get everything to 15 and way down 15. If the next one is a 5, 10, 15, yeah, then maybe you just use that and get to 17 on the items that are already done. And if you have enough money, you can bring some stuff up to 17. But you'll mm -hmm. have more options when that event comes around. So you'll be able to make financially more efficient decisions. Okay. Well, yeah. Oh, and another question I kind of had since I'm kind of just starting to get the Absolab coins. Mm -hmm. with, with the purchase priority, do you usually go for the weapon first with the, the Damien coins and then go for the gloves? um with the lotus coins yeah typically yeah so it's also because I, I guess that 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 goes a little bit back into the the upgrading path and stuff because once you get a better idea for like especially for your next characters like where you're going to go and how fast you transfer that gives you the second input that you need beyond like you know what stats do a piece get and you know how expensive is it but also how long am i going to hold on to this piece right because when you transfer hammer the potential goes back down to epic so in the beginning, you'll make very few things legendary unless you know for sure they're going to stay legendary for a while because otherwise all that tear up money that upfront costs is just going to get lost again. Yeah. So it's perfectly fine for your weapon to be epic or unique because if you're going to go up to Absolab, you can transfer hammer it over. You can get the seven, right? You can go down to 16. Safeguard last there, boom, instantly 17 star weapon. But the potential is going to go down to epic so that that extra billion or, you know, 800 mil or something from the tier up, that potential is going to get lost, that value. So yeah. That'll get streamlined as you go, but you'll learn from your first character. It's like, it's, yeah, it's totally fine, right? Yeah, I don't feel too bad about the Fafnir yeah. because I, I queued that up during an event and mm -hmm. it, it was a huge help during Damien Lotus. So plus, I'll need it for a few more weeks before I get the weapon anyways. But yeah, it does kind of feel yeah. bad losing that. Yeah, and it, it's, it, it, it because you can run that into the ground and be like, well, eventually, you know, I'm going to get like eternal top and bottom. So why should I even invest in CRA, right? That's like the other extreme of that. Well, you're going to need 22 CRA if you want to get even remotely strong yeah. enough to kill those bosses, right? So there's a, you can go ad absurdum and, uh, and then just <laughs> kind of be silly about it. So, but j just to, you know, for the grand line of like, where are you going from the, you know, where's your character going? If like the sky's the limit. 
Um, if you don't know where the next step is, then you can invest pretty heavily. And in the beginning for your first character, if you spend all your money as you're getting it, that's probably fine as long as you're spending it remotely in the right direction. Because you don't want to be like, oh, no, no, I can't spend because there's no event and then sit on like your first 20 bill ever, like hold on to that. Your character is going to lose so much momentum, right, from not spending that at all. Yeah. It might be better spending it a little bit inefficiently than just sitting on it to, because you don't, you know, you're so... Uh, afraid of making any kind of mistake, right? So this is totally, it's totally fine. It's just, I just wanted to mention it to to, to put it into perspective with the the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. I do have the gloves. I at at purple, so I'll probably, mm -hmm. I have enough coins to get the uh, Absolab gloves. So I'll probably just end up transferring those over. They're only twelve stars, so it's not really. Yeah, in general, the oh, thing is just there. always like whatever gives you the biggest upgrade, right? So if you happen to have right now like a really lucky glove with like a really good flame, then for you, glove might be, which you kind of have, glove might have be, flame, yeah, yeah, glove might be a slightly lower priority for you. It's just okay. that usually cape is a low priority because tyrant is already really close, because um, yeah. it's so good. But maybe for you, shoe would be would be a better than one, right? I don't know what shoe you're wearing now. Uh yeah. I have a 6 gen all stat 40 decks on the flame for that. It's, it's not too bad. But yeah, I guess either one. Idea. The gloves get yeah. uh, crit damage or something, right? They can, but if they get to legendary. Oh, so again, okay. So that's, yeah, okay. Yeah, so th again, that determines, like, if you're going to stay on Absolab for a long time, then it's worth getting them to legendary and worth getting that critical damage, at least, like, one line, maybe a line of critical damage and a line of stat, something like that. That's usually, like, a good good place to stop for Absolab. Um but if you know already that your character is not going to be in Absolab very long, some people might just get it too epic or unique, or some people might just skip Absolab entirely, right? If you know that you're going to go straight into Arcane, your character can get strong enough, and they can, wearing some Tyrant gear, wearing some other stuff, and then Legion is going to carry, be carrying you more. Mm -hmm. You're going to throw okay. way more nodes onto it from another character, for example, and you meet the requirements to do Hard Lucid and Hard Will. Well, now you can just wait for the boxes or buy them you know, buy the droplets with money and just gather the boss droplets in the same way that you gather the Lotus and Damien droplets from killing the bosses and then just buy the arcane gear and just skip over Absolab altogether. So there's a lot of options if you know where you're going and you know how quickly you're going to be getting there realistically with your character. There's a bunch of steps that you can start skipping. But for your first character, it's probably a good idea to just take it one, one day at a time and just f go through the steps and with some foresight, of course, knowing like how long you're roughly going to be there and what the next step is, so you don't over, you know, unnecessarily like overfund things. Um, but eventually, you'll be like, okay, you know, in hindsight, I only had the Absolab on for like, you know, it took me like three weeks to get the Absolab, and I, you know, I already switched out of it after like a month, and you could be like, oh wow, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm if I get lucky and I get a drop from a run somewhere, and then I'm already like a quarter of the way there, maybe I'll just skip it on this other character, you know, again. Once you have the drop rate, and once you get the drops, then options will start opening up. And yeah, then you just want to play into those, essentially. All right, that'll be definitely my priority uh, I going forward. I do have a another thing on the the inner ability. I, I've got mm -hmm. a best slot for my top line. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I know you can get meso or drop for that as well. So I don't know if you think that's worth rolling off of or just best to keep that. I don't know. It's boss damage, so it's. I can mm -hmm. definitely see not being very useful in this phase of my account if I'm just farming a lot. But I do have the item and drop rate down below. Yeah. So if you just had item and drop rate and the other runs, ha other rolls had like nothing, I would say probably just either circulator or 50% off event. Just roll a little bit and and get like a drop or mezzo on top, because these are lines that are they're very limited in your equips as well, right? You can only get up to 100%. Yeah from uh, mezzo obtained total in your equips and only up to 200% drop rate from your equips in total. And these go on top of that. So in that sense, mm -hmm. they are very valuable. And yeah. they will, uh, as long as your top line is not something that determines the functionality of your character, then getting drop or mezzo instead would just allow you to go so much faster. Now, you have the boss line and you also have the like near perfect epic lines of 9 and 10, I would say this is a totally fine inner ability for you to have for quite a long time. Plus, okay. we know from Korea that in the summer we're most likely getting the inner ability presets where you can make another one. So, oh, that's great. 
Yeah, we'll make up to three of them. So this will be a really good time for you to just save up honor experience so that when that time comes, then you'll have more honor experience and now you have more resources. So now you can make better decisions, right? Now you can know mm -hmm. where your character is at and be like, okay, I don't know, say the meta changes and you need like cooldown skip top line or something. Okay, then you could just reroll this one. Or let's say that there's no really best in slot at that point. There's a bunch of them that are equally good. Then you just keep this, you make a second uh, inner ability line that has like 20% drop top. Because probably by that point, you don't want to get your money mostly from... Um, boss crystals. From boss crystals, exactly, thank you. And so the drop rate will actually become your most valuable resource in terms of like getting pitch drops or getting ring box drops. Those are oh, going to okay. be giving you insane value. So anywhere you can min max on drop rate and getting like a 20% drop uh inner ability switching to that when you open up the box maybe waiting a little bit because it seems like they're gonna put a cooldown on things um oh, and then no. switch back into uh well the main thing that they put the cooldown on was the overall switch because what people would do is they would switch to inner ability uh to a legion preset with buff duration and then press a bunch of buffs and then switch out of it into a damage preset right after and oh, okay. that would give some buffs for people like too long a duration um, so they're going to switch it later, but for now they've given, a they've put a cooldown on, on like the general full character switch, but I don't think there's a specific on the inner ability switch, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, by that point, but you're already like on levels of min maxing at that point. Right. But you'll set yourself up now by knowing that your inner ability is really good for now and that you can start saving up honor experience so that when that opportunity comes, you'll have the resources to be able to make choices that make sense for the resources that you have. Yeah, and I don't have to feel bad about just because I don't have any mules, so I've just been using all the honor XP on this guy. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's good to know that I can keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, for mules, it's really so. Yeah, when I said like requires the functionality of your character, there's really only two lines, and that's either attack speed or buff duration. If your characters mm -hmm. heavily rely on those, um, the fun part is that. M I think all characters that need buff duration, also their best in slot top line is also attack speed. So those are like the really fun ones. Oh. Um, but for most of those characters, um, if you just set like a top line buff duration as well, that's like 48 or 49 or 50, um, that's usually really close to being also really good. And I like guess a boss mule, that's usually fine. You, just, you can just stand on that. Um, but the attack speed, yeah, that's usually on characters that even with the attack speed, they're already kind of slow, like a Cannoneer, Marksman, um, Kaiser. Like, without the attack speed, you really feel that on those characters. And, yeah. yeah, so there you really want those top lines. But if you don't have those, you have the luxury of just, yeah, drop rate, mezzo obtain, just any any kind of stuff like that and just propel your progress, you know, by a, a factor and sit on your honor EXP. And then when you're really trying to min-max for bosses and you're like, hey, I want to, you know, everything else is so expensive. Everything else takes months to upgrade. Now you have like two, two million, two and a half million honor EXP. Now you have a really f good shot at actually making a killer inner ability that really will make a difference in terms of the damage. And then you can switch over it. Gotcha. So you had a good, a good pace there. So good, good question. Good, good timing. Um, one that. thing to circle back real quick to, uh, to drop rate. So I have the drop rate command. I talk yeah. a little bit about like how you can go about the lines, uh, the names, the mentions, like how they're different. Because there's like meso obtain, meso drop rate, item drop rate, uh, item obtain. You know, make sure that you have those numbers and then the percentages from familiars as well that you have those clear, and and also like how to go about like making your first set essentially of like drop and meso pieces to do it in a very cheap way that gives you the best returns. Because um, you want to make sure that you have like the right pieces picked out for this before the event comes so that you know exactly what you're going to be doing and what your approach is going to be on the day itself right yeah um so i don't know if you had any questions on like which items would be good to pick for one or pick for another thing um well i mean you kind of already said that uh the horn tail and the the earrings would be good mm -hmm. um what about yeah the the you so the event ring so I have like a hundred cubes for the earring so I actually have yep. an event ring I guess I could it's twelve percent dex I could would that be a pretty good one to maybe turn into a a, a drop meso item I would say right the two hundred that you can have you can maybe wait a little bit longer make sure that you have both of the rings so that in case they go because there's a good chance that within two hundred they also just both get to legendary and you're able to roll within legendary with them 
right? So they're yeah, those rings. Okay. That's basically the event rings are free and the cubes are free. You're just you're getting like forty percent either mezzo or drop <laughs> essentially from that. So I would cash in on that hard. Yeah, if you get any kind of so. Usually for your first pass, if you're trying to make nine items, you'll probably get a little bit more than four drop or more than five mezzo, right? It'll be a little bit lopsided. And then just pick whatever that you have more of or too many of. Then look for the items that you have that line of that doesn't also have decks and then reroll those. So that hopefully by the end, most of them also have some decks on it. So because you can imagine if all of them have 9% decks, that's nine equips, that's 81% decks that you get from that. So. You know, all the little bits there pile up, and that also takes a little bit of weight off of your CRA pieces and off of all of your flames and all of that, mm -hmm. that you don't need to min-max on there as much. Okay. Yeah, and event, then... rings are, event rings are great for that. And the, the best, thing is about, best thing about event rings is that if you do end up hitting a lot of stat, so usually if you had like 21% stat, it'll be a little bit like on the edge, but 21 is still very cheap to roll. But if you hit 24 or higher percent stat, you know, then you'd be like, well, now I want to keep it for damage, right? Because now okay, it's too good. Yeah. But then the event ring is good, is flexible in that way. Like if it ends up being drop or mezzo ring, that's great. And if it ends up being damage ring for now, it's not ideal, but it's also fine. Because that means it's essentially like value of a 19 star ring. That means you don't have to risk your Kana treasure ring as early. Or that means you don't have to think about your reinforced ring as early, right? But it does mean that you might have to settle for slightly weaker rings like the silver blossom ring like the treasure hunter john ring then some people take like ifia's rings or something like that um but then you could just do the kind of treasure ring for example right and if then, yeah. then that one hits stat well now if you have both of them with stat and you do need to drop or mezzo ring well the kind of treasure ring is eventually going to go past 17 star is going to overpower the event ring so now the event ring needs to be be rolled again because even if the kind of treasure ring blows up it turns into a trace you can get backups for the kind of treasuring, so you can reliably get it to higher star and get it back up there eventually. So that was the other prong. Um, way back. Remember when we were talking about um, the transfer hammering? You want to do the big jump, right, from 17 and then up to 20 or 21. Yeah. If if you don't do transfer hammering, then you want to walk it one step at a time. Like for CRA, for example, a lot of people are like, okay, I have 17 CRA, so the next step is 21. I'm like, well, I would say the next step is 18 and then 19 and then 21 because 20 to 21 is lower risk than 19 to 20. So you probably jump from 19 to 21. But like, yeah, it's the next step. But don't forget those little steps before it, right? Because mm -hmm. you can have someone who has five bill and has three pieces of CRA at 17, tries to go for 21, doesn't make it. There's a chance that that happens. But you can have the other person next to them and be like, they got them first all up to 18. Then first all up to 19 and then the first one did make it uh so now they have a 17 and two 19s whereas the first person still has three 17s so the second person spent the same amount of money but it because they spent it in a different way they did gain four stars while the other person gained zero right so I you want to be smart about your money there in terms of like yeah if you have the average money that the calculator says that doesn't mean that you're guaranteed gonna hit that right yeah Okay, right on. So yeah, then so 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 I'll probably focus on that new ring first, and then mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely want to get the Kana treasure ring up to legendary since it doesn't have a very good line on it right now. So that'll probably mm -hmm. be my focus, and then the other event ring. Yeah, I would just start with the items that are already like high tier. Um, yeah, your cadet's power crystal is a little bit annoying that it has eighteen percent on it. Yeah. So what you could do there is make a second piece. So. Could be Sweetwater Tattoo, or maybe could technically be another Condensed Power Crystal, but I'd probably do Sweetwater Tattoo or something. Or mm -hmm. maybe if you can get a Twilight Mark right through like normal Lucid or later Hard Lucid runs, but that might take a while. Yeah. Um, and then if that one hits Strength as well, the other piece, then that means you can do this one for Drop. Or if the other one hits Drop, then you can just use this one for Dex and then the other one for Drop, right? That way you can kind of set yourself up for a win-win. All right. Yeah, anything that's already unique, I would focus on those because it's the least amount of money you have to invest before you can start cashing in. So if it's already legendary, cool. Reroll, bam, next one. Uh, unique and doesn't have a function for a long time. All right, uh, like another function, a damage function, cool. Become dropper mezzo, just one tier up and boom, you're done. But yeah, the when did you say it was? The, the 20th? Next week, right? Yeah, the 20th is when the accessory uh, yeah. miracle time is, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so until then, you're just going to be, like, prepping to go into Abzo. And most yeah, of the money, much. just want to save it up. And then, yeah, once every, once the 
weapon, uh, what's the drop and mezzo set is like complete, then you can go back to like, okay, that money's invested there. And then you can look at like, are there any other events coming in terms of upgrading? Not in the meantime, cool. That means that you could, you could t like, if there's no event, you can spend a little bit on cubes. So then you can probably look at like WSE and seeing those things are legendary. If things are legendary, ideally, I want to have two useful lines. And I don't count mm. stat as a second line. I, you can kind of yeah. count stat, I think, as a third line, but not as a second line. It's just so much weaker than all the other stuff. So for the emblem, you'd really want like either two lines of attack or line of attack and line of IED, because even early on, that's very valuable. For the secondary, same thing, two lines of attack or line of attack and line of boss. You could maybe get away with a line of ID and a line of boss, but that's already like, that's kind of pushing it. And for yeah. the weapon, you know, it's totally fine to keep the weapon up to unique until you get to Absolab. And then Absolab, you can get to legendary because then, you know, there's only one above that, which is arcane, and that's going to require some damage to get. And then, well, above that is the Genesis, which already comes unique, and that's a year away at least. So I, I, I didn't know that came unique, but I, I haven't really done any research yeah. on that because it's just so far off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's when it's so much work, but so it comes completely twenty-two starred and wow. like done. It comes with unique regular potential, epic bonus potential on non-reboot, and non-reboot has like the scrolling thing as well, so it comes like fully scrolled and done as well. And wow. then it has two skills: one is the iframe, and the other one is uh, ten percent final damage, like passive essentially. So cool. it's. Yeah, it's insane. And it's a lucky item as well. So it combines with multiple sets. So that's typically when oh, people... Wow. Uh, yeah, if you have like four set uh, or three set pieces CRA and four set arcane, then it becomes like the f the five set and the four set respectively. So it also, it gives you back the uh, the set bonus that the weapon has now of the extra 30% boss damage as well. Isn't there something like the slime ring too? It's like mm -hmm. out for the boss setters. Is that a similar thing? Uh, so the slime ring, when they released the slime ring, they made it part of the boss accessory set. And then right after that, they were like in Korea, because in Korea, they don't have Sweetwater stuff and they don't have Golux. So there's a huge mm -hmm. gap there in their progression. They they literally do like, they like craft items like with smithing and stuff, um, like face accessories and pendants and things like that. And it's like some, it looks like some 2008 shit. Uh, <laughs> Um, so, but so when they made like the daybreak set, right? So they they took a, the Twilight Mark came and like the Estella earrings and the uh, what's the pendant? The daybreak pendant. And then they were like, oh, the slime ring that we just came out. Those bosses are around the same level, so we'll add the slime ring as well. And it's like, oh, but they just released it as part of the boss accessory set. And believe it or not, boss accessory set is is well now maybe not as much anymore because of the daybreak set. But until then, was best in slot like end game for Korea. So they would have like uh, quite a few items that they would just keep, like the Drominator pen would be best in slot and then the Slime Ring and then the uh, the Crystal Ventus badge, right? If they had no other badge would be like, that three set would be there and their end game best in slot. So it'd be like, well, you just gave us other pieces. We just upgraded. We spent like thousands of dollars on like min maxing this stuff because it was going to be our best in slot. And now you change the set bonus. So what they did was they gave it this scroll and you can, by the scroll, and then you change which set it belongs to, essentially. So oh, either, day okay. either daybreak or so the default will be that it's part of the boss accessory set. But if you want to use it as daybreak, you just buy the scroll, which is like ten mil or something from the NPC, and then it changes it to daybreak set bonus instead. Okay. Yeah. I, I, you know, I actually just just randomly other question because I was just looking at it. So on the mm -hmm. uh, the Fafnir, is that thirty two attack line? Is that worth anything, or is that just like no? pretty much a garbage line okay gotcha yeah yeah it used to be like it gave you a certain amount of attack per level uh, but instead of doing that they just changed it to flat amounts but now it just looks incredibly silly yeah and <laughs> yeah and people with like 21 attack plat 21 percent attack plus 32 attack just want to strangle uh anything <laughs> that comes near them whenever you roll stuff like that yeah it just looks uh it just looks silly so even though those are all three like useful stats to me, it's not necessarily they're not good rolls. Yeah. So if you had, for example, like just the worst top line you could imagine, and then nine attack, nine attack, that would be doing way more than this, for example. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. But again, this weapon is going to be re replaced with Absolab soon, right? So you don't yeah. want to like invest more into this one. 
The secondary, yeah, um, the secondary in the base damage is really, really close to like the Princess No, but because yeah. you can make a Princess No on the side, you can very in a very cheap way just roll whenever you want to without the possible downside of ending up with nothing. So you kind of want to just alternate between the two, very similar like we were just talking about, like the drop and the mezzo pieces, right? And just pick mm -hmm. whatever is the best one in the moment, swap it out, and then just roll the other one when you want to. The emblem. Okay. Is a little bit more delicate in that way because you can sometimes there are events that give out um, like unique or legendary emblems, and sometimes people will put those on boss mules to save on the money for tearing up. But the way it's actually more valuable is to put it on a character that you know you're going to be playing for a long time and you're not very quickly going to be getting to like the Saren emblem, <laughs> which is you know yeah. hard Saren. Because um, then if you get to that point, you can use it just like the secondary and just roll the other one on the side, which is how I very recently here on my hero managed to roll a uh, three line attack emblem because I had this one, which is, you know, it's nice. 40 ID and 18 attack is very solid. All three lines are yeah. doing something. You can build around that. You can keep this very far into the game. And then I have my my free cubes for my bossing and I just threw them on the, on the emblem on the side. If I didn't have this second emblem here, that I would have never been able to roll this because I would never roll like five or 10 cubes at a time, right? Because now you're going to yeah, you have something shitty and now you lose all that damage, so it doesn't make any sense. Now, that basically forces you into using bright cubes, which is a very, very expensive way of rolling. I don't know if you looked at the calculations between glowing and bright, depending on the, the potential you're going for. No, I mean, not really, but I can, mm -hmm. I can imagine that it's not as good value for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got better odds for prime lines. So if I was looking for 33%... Oh, I actually did not know that. Yeah. So that's why we use those if you're looking, like, once you get to the arcane gloves and you try to hit, like, two lines of critical damage, for example, then the okay. cost is way lower on average to using bright cubes there than the glowing cubes. Um, same thing with if you're trying to make, like, a boss uh, or you're trying to make drop mezzo set that's, like, a really solid one that has, like, maximum drop and maximum mezzo in one set, so you'll need a lot of double lines. Those are also both prime lines, so then bright cubes on average will also be a lot cheaper. Oh, interesting. I did not yep. know that. Yeah. So with the glowing cube, it's like the it's like 100% chance for prime, and then 5% in the uh, no 10% sorry in the on the second line, and 1% on the bottom line. And for uh, at least that seems to confirm with the percentages that we have from KMS, it's not 100% official. Uh, and in bright cubes, it's 100% on top line, 20% on the second line, but then 5% on the bottom line. So. Yeah, the other one, like the middle one is double, but the bottom one is 5x. So that's why even though the cubes are more expensive, on average, if you're trying to get multiple prime lines, it's way cheaper on bright cubes than glowing. Oh, okay. Good. That's really good to know, yeah. Yep. Right on. I don't, man, I don't really know if I had any more things Links I Legion. wanted to specifically look at. But... I mean, you have my commands to look at, so what could you really want yeah. to know, right? <laughs> and I, I copied pretty much everything from the... Uh, Corsair Discord as well. Mm -hmm. Those are also super helpful, yeah. Should be pretty set on my link skills and all that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah if you're... Familiar... Um, I see your, oh, yeah, your, Legion, your Legion mobbing set up here. So if you are starting to struggle with killing monsters, right? Then mm -hmm. the bonus EXP is taking too much value away from you. And it'd be a better idea to go into normal monster damage instead. Cause, mm, yeah, that, that makes yeah. sense. If you don't have the kill speed, then you can't really capitalize on the kills yet right yeah that's why we do that's why we boss in in damage gear and then kill the box and drop rate gear not yeah not the other way around because then you just, just take way too long to kill the boss if uh yeah that makes sense i feel like i came in today wanting to just ma maximize my damage as much as possible and i'm leaving mm -hmm. wanting to maximize my meso and drop <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> exactly different mentality i'm looking mm -hmm. at all my gear differently now mm-hmm yeah, because that could set you up to, like, increase your damage by, like, I don't know, by, like, 40% or something in the next month or so. Uh, or maybe by 100% in the next month or so. But then after that, you're going to... Every single upgrade you're going to want to make after that is going to take so long that that can be a very demotivating thing. Now, that might be good, because then that means you don't, you know, spending your entire life playing this game. <laughs> um, but if you want to more, like, leave on your own volition rather than kind of feeling forced out because you cannot... You know, someone who spends like two months saving and has enough money, but then has like one backup and the first backup booms will feel like that last month was like for nothing, you know? Yeah. But someone who has half the money, but has like six backups and then locks into it with one of them, they can keep going. So 
that's the person who, who yeah, you know, skips and hops past everyone else eventually. Yeah, I can't let uh, those kind of factors disturb in your mood, though. They're too, mm -hmm. too much random element. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of that in this game for sure. But I'm sure, like once I get the drop rate and stuff, like I'll I'll start getting more nodes and stuff because I, I think that's a lot of it that I'm mm -hmm. missing out on. Cause I went straight to 260 with the burning, so I, I, my nodes are not like super leveled or anything like that. But um, yeah. yeah, we can look at the we can look at that a little bit, but it look, looks pretty solid. I, I put the blink on there. Yeah, I I, I have the mm -hmm. rope lift and the, the sharp eyes. I don't use them mm -hmm. though; they're just for the stats. But I don't yeah, know. I gotcha. Oh, you've even got the dis decent mystic door. Have you found some use for that? I, I have never really used it, no. <laughs> no, that's usually one disassemble because you have teleport yeah. rocks all the time, right? So you could just move wherever you want. So that's that's usually not one we even like keep or level. You can just extract that for the for the okay. points. Good the other know. decent uh, same thing with decent hyper body at this point. Like it it's really only used by like one or two classes who scale off of HP. Okay. And for everyone else you kinda could just get rid of that as well. The um the other decent so um sharp eyes Combat order, speed infusion, and uh, blessing. I don't see you don't. I see you don't have decent combat orders in there. Decent combat orders is actually kind of sleeper strong because it oh. increases the level of all your like of all your skills in your fourth job. But in, uh, that includes like most of your attacking skills and a bunch of passives that improve all of your damage. So they're actually kind of it's actually kind of a nice skill that gets overlooked a little bit. I'll try it out. Yeah. Yeah. Probably My increase your damage out. more than just a. Uh, like a level one boost node that's just in there to squeeze a little bit of levels. Yeah, um, exactly. And I haven't found all the boost nodes I need, so mm -hmm. I'm just kind of throwing crap in there. I've got two perfect ones in the top left. There, mm -hmm. but yeah, those are crap. considerably higher levels than the other ones. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Um, so those four, so Blessing, uh, Speed Infusion, Sharp Eyes, and uh, Combat Orders, those don't really gain anything from leveling. So I'm totally fine if you just keep them on level one because they have 100% oh, uptime. Okay. So just, just keep them level the, one. Disassemble the rest. Yeah, that's what I do. If I I have like one or two characters where I kind of have them leveled, but it really is like three all stat or something at level thirty extra or like five resistance or something. Um, if you're still building up and the value for possible bossing mules and stuff is there, then I think you're totally in the right position to just like disassemble the extras there. Yeah. Am I fine to just keep leveling these like trash nodes and? in the hopes that I could maybe one day transfer it over to an actual good one. Yeah, you have to make sure that it's like the top line is the one that you will eventually use, right? Yeah. As long as that's the case, then you're yeah, you're you're pretty much fine. But if you're leveling like uh are you uh are you going for nine skills or are you going for Yeah, so I it's uh the Like six uh three, nine skills. Three duos? Yeah, for six skills. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll oh, nine six skills, yeah. Total eventually. Yeah. Um, if you're leveling up all nine, and you know you're only going to be using six of them, uh, honestly, okay, if you level up a node up to like level six or seven, disassembling, like in the greater scheme th of things, like doesn't really matter. But once you're going oh. past that, you're losing a lot of efficiency. So, but usually around that time, you will have found your, uh, your, your six, so you should be good. Okay, right on. Yep. Yeah, I wasn't too worried about that. I just thought I'd ask since we had it up. Yep. Oh yeah, so the the other three, so like the Erda ones, are usually ones that I don't really craft, but that you can slowly level up, especially if you know you're on your main characters, so like the rope layer, yeah. the blink, the fucking the fountain, and the the bind. Those are good to like slowly level up as you get them. Yeah, I use the bind and the you know for bossing obviously, but the, the fountain mm -hmm. I use that for mobbing like. Yeah, all another the time. summon. <laughs> I'm sure you love those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm just slamming it in there as, as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I actually, I was kind of. I've been crafting node stones lately, but I originally like maxed my holy symbol. I was like crafting yeah. holy symbols and level. I don't know if that's dumb, but it just seemed like good value at the time. Yeah, in your situation, I would have said just craft node stones mm -hmm. because you have three, like nine, uh, nine skills that you want to level. So six boost nodes possibly that you want to get, and you have all of your skill nodes that you need to level. So the average chance that even you open a node stone is something that you can use is very high. So oh, the okay. cost, yeah, yeah, because crafting one node stone is only thirty-five shards. But if you craft decent holy symbol, that's one hundred and forty. So you could craft four node stones for that, and there's a good chance that those four are all just boost nodes. But those are all just boost node levels that deal a lot of your damage as well. Plus, there's a chance that one of those is a tri node that allows you to start consolidating. You know? 
Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I probably right. craft uh, as long as your stuff is not maxed. As like as soon as your boost notes start looking maxed, crafting node stones just drops in value because now like 85% of what you're going to open you're just going to have to extract again so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah then all the value is out the window also characters that only need like one set of boost nodes it's a way lower value there because most of the boost nodes you open you're just directly going to extract again so but mostly yeah if you need two sets or more yeah craft node stones for sure really good value okay right on yeah that's what i've been doing for a while i just mm -hmm. since i maxed out the holy symbol so yeah you don't have like one skill like, if you're on a Buccaneer or something, you need to max out that Lord of the Deep, right? Yeah. That's, like, all of your damage. So, that's, like, an exception. Or if you're a Kana, like, your domain just needs to be leveled. Otherwise, you just... I mean, you're already even with a max domain. Poor Kanas. But, uh, <laughs> like, you need to max out your domain instantly to make sure that from both mobbing and bossing to get something done. Uh, but if you're just a character that brings it up, you're more DPM heavy, you're doing it across the board, you got a lot of outs for boost nodes, hell yeah, craft those. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I'd be good to know for my alts in the future. Mm -hmm. I think I'm probably do mechanic next. I don't know. It just seems to be similar to the Corsair playstyle. Yeah, a lot of summons. I think you might like Cannoneer as well. It's also got oh, a yeah, decent I, amount I, of um... on my radar for sure. And mm -hmm. I love the the uh, you know they have the wings on the Corsair, but the Cannoneer has kind of a similar thing without the glide. But I love that. Yeah. just like being able to just pop up real quick. <laughs> yeah, you just jump on the cannon, kind of like hold on to it while you're firing it. Yeah. You can also Very use cool. it, uh, you can use your first one from the ground as well, so that gives you like a little bit of an, uh, like a fourth, because you can jump and then you can boost twice, but if you use the first one from the ground, then you can kind of get three up jumps that way. Oh, okay. That's oh, and if you like that way of moving, um, Blaster has kind of the same thing that uh, Kenneer does, but like on steroids. Interesting. I, I like, tried Blaster to like 120 and I actually mm -hmm. hated it, but I feel like maybe there's just something I didn't understand with it. it it's really complicated. Like the order oh, in which okay. you press things, like you'll have to buffer skills and then let them go and then animation cancel them with other stuff. Oh, if you if you crazy. get the hang of that, then they're wild. Like there was a guy who did um, solo the whole way through with Blaster and... Um, Killed Black Mage solo, like, without being liberated and everything. Killed normal Saren. I think he said, like, hard Saren solo or something now. But, like, wow. just did the whole thing, like, completely alone. Because Blaster builds up a lot of shields, so you can actually tank quite a lot of hits. And because of the movement ability and, like, the bobbing and the weaving, uh, if you're really good mechanically, you can do a whole lot of stuff. Um, Maybe I'll check it out. Do a yeah, little but bit more research. Yeah, so Cannoneer has, like, the upshot, and it has, like, a little bit of a backshot, but it's more like a... You know, you move. It's like you farted in the opposite direction. Like you, well, you barely. Well, they have that on air too. Yeah, the yeah, yeah exactly. Shot. Yeah, but like, um, I could show you on stream. But like on the, um, mm -hmm. like blaster can do that. It give itself way more momentum that way. Okay. I mean, I like mo movement like that. So maybe I would like blaster if I just figured it out a little bit more. Yeah, it seems very similar to. The Corsair movement, but it's it's much faster. <laughs> yeah, so you could do multiple horizontal ones, and then you can just wait. Uh -huh. You could, you could it, it like stacks in the um, the movement speed. Yeah, this I get kind of get stuck oh, wow. on things here, but yeah, it's kind of a weird map to do it on. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Vanishing Journey map is really cool. You could just slam from one side oh, yeah. to the other one, uh, <laughs> just like over the top. Hang on, let's see if I could do it. Okay, waste your time a little bit more. Hang on. Oh, no worries. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're across the whole map in like a second. Yeah. That's awesome. Super fast, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. there's a few characters. I mean, Buccaneer, yeah, has the crazy mobility, of course. Thunderbreaker could do some weird things as well, where they have like... They have like two dash skills, but if you alternate them, then their cooldown goes down. So you could just like spam them and you just like <laughs> yeah, zoom I, through I the map. I have a 200 Thunderbreaker, but the, mm -hmm. the Carpal Tunnel, man, it's insane. Yeah. You have to mash on them. They're really yeah, cool though. exactly. But for some people, that's really fun. And then that's great that that character is out there. And then for the majority uh, for a majority of people, that's just like too much. And then it's great to have Dawn Warrior for those people, you know? You can just... <laughs> Suck like on yeah, some purple right. crayons and be like, this is this is perfectly fine for me, you know? Yeah, or Corsair, you just put down your boats and you just hold down rapid fire, standing mm -hmm. still. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, if, well, if anything else ever comes to mind, you'll be in the in the chat and you can use the commands. And you've got the, 
the class discord already on speed dial so that's uh <laughs> that's like all the resources that you can probably possibly need um yeah if you if you're gonna stick with the character you could definitely and it's your main character you could definitely like uh bring you up into the into the main guild yeah i'll have to have figure that out uh message, have room. you got a message uh yeah, you could just right? leave the. Uh, as long as you're you're in Raindor now, right? Yeah, you could just. Uh, as long as we have a spot available, let me check right now, actually, because I was on the. I was on the hero. I'm trying to make sure that we always have like a few spots available, so like uh, I'm never trying to be maxed out. Always try to be like 197, 198 at the highest, so that whenever someone wants to move over, they can just do it immediately. Oh, cool. Um, but you do have the day cooldown, right, of being able to use the G skills. So I don't know oh. if you had planned to do your weeklies like tomorrow, then... I actually did all the weekly boss stuff, so... Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, that's fine then. Uh, we're at one... Oh, we're at 196, yeah. So if you if you just leave Raindor and apply, then I could just get you in there. Awesome. Hey, sorry, I'm get trying out. to figure it out. How do you leave the guild? <laughs> uh, bottom right, I think. Yeah, if you're in guild info, leave bottom guild, right I has to leave. Yeah. Yep. yeah, the leave. UI, it's all kind of like the same color. The buttons don't really <laughs> jump out at you. <laughs> So then it's I all very, very gray. I gotta join. I gotta send in a request or something like that. Yeah, there's no option to invite people. There's just um, there's just join requests. They used to have uh, we used to have invite people. Like you just right click someone and invite. But now if you right click invite, it just takes them to the page where they have to apply. <laughs> so it's like, uh -oh. like yeah, you're not bringing them someone in. You're just telling them like what to do to get in. Yeah. Is there no way to search? Uh, yeah, oh. bottom left is search. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm blind. Yeah, no, this is I some. <laughs> they, this is pretty new UI as well for MapleStory, but this could be a lot better. <laughs> hey, there right, you go. So yeah, I sent a, a request in there. Appreciate that. Yep. Yeah, I appreciate you taking some time today to look everything over and give me some advice. I really, really appreciate it. So. Yeah, no problem, man. Let me rank you up. So now you have access to uh, the G skills, and you also have access to the Guild Castle if you want. Cool. Yeah, I've, I've, you can use the uh, the the room to Star Force in, right? The exactly. Room. Yeah. Then you'll Star Catch automatically in there, so that'll save some money in the long run. And we have um, oh, we have the supply store as well, so you can buy one note in there every day for like four mil or something. Oh wow, so, that's that's really nice. I didn't. That's know not that. too bad, right? That's like another yeah. thirty nodes a month. Uh, and if you do the weekly, so you have to go into like the dungeon and kill 5,000 uh, dragons, then based on how many people did it, you also get weekly rewards. So that's um, character um, arcane symbol selectors and also nodes in there. And could also be flames if you build out the personal rewards. But those first two are probably for your account and for yourself. Those are untradeable, but your character can still use those. So What was that the dungeon? Right? Is it a culvert? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, no, not the culvert, but if you go into the castle, um, what's it called? Oh, again, in guys? the castle, the dungeon in the castle. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to talk to the NPC and it'll take me, I don't know, take me, take me into the catacombs, but it has a different word for it there. And then you kill the monsters in there. Uh, and in there, you, the coupons and stuff don't work in there, so you can just do that whenever, basically, when you're just kind of like chilling. Cool. Or in your case, you just put some summons down and you watch anime, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I guess I'll do my culvert and my flag race as well. Oh yeah, if you yeah if you do those, uh, so if you do one of the two, then you'll keep your rank, and if you do if you do get deranked, it's because you didn't do either one, and then you need to do both of them to get your rank back, essentially. Okay, good That's to know. That's the only the only rules we have. As long as you don't put in like five points for your culvert score, then you'll be fine. If you <laughs> if you're kind of like cheating your score, then we'll probably have a have a word and be like, what's going on here? <laughs> All right, right on. Cool. All right. Well, uh, good luck with everything, and welcome to the welcome to the big leagues, I guess. Welcome to the the main guild. <laughs> hey, thanks so much, man. Thanks for your time. Yeah, you're very welcome. And uh, yeah, good luck with everything, and hopefully the the art artifact the accessories next week don't give you too much trouble. Yeah, you'll probably hear from me in the chat, maybe it's a little bit of progress. So, right on. all right, that's good. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Cool. All right, yeah, have a good one. So much, man. You too. Yeah. Bye. 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 All right, cool stuff. <clears throat> so that's because. Nobody, nobody, you guys, in the last month, nobody left a comment that they would like to win a session. So I just gave the sessions away to people who were in the chat. Free sessions, easy clap. All right. So if you do want to win one, 
at the end of January, okay, leave a comment on this video saying you would like to win one of these sessions. Please include your Discord name so I can reach out to you. YouTube commenters you. Or don't, and don't win. That's fine too. We are a few days away from this giveaway closing. Uh, warp speed is not working, but you don't need it. You guys are good at video games. You don't need that stuff. Look at that. We are at 36 level 10s already. Up to 50 slots available for the giveaway. The giveaway for what? The giveaway for 10 Vec Pets or Waters of Life. Oh, never mind. There's only 13 slots available because someone just got to level 10, as you can see. Um... Yeah, all that being said, these commands, this information this is all available through the Twitch chat, twitch.tv slash Scarter. You can go on there, exclamation mark dailies, exclamation mark progression, or just exclamation mark info, and it has all of the info, or exclamation mark help, all of that works. It'll take you to a big list with all of the commands that are available, a little bit over 200, that will give you information and help you through the game. Make sure that you don't get stuck or that you can get some more information on a topic. And if you still have additional questions, we'll be there for you. Class discords are a great resource as well for people. If it's a specific class question, if it's a general game mechanic question, I could probably help you out. So hopefully that was useful. Hopefully that was enjoyable to watch. Hopefully you picked up a thing or two. And I will see you either in the next video or you could be a person having a session with me. You can check exclamation more coaching or description of the video on how to do that. Leaving a comment is one way to do it, but not the only way. Um, or I'll see you live on stream. I stream every day over at twitch.tv slash Carter. So feel free to check in every now and then. All right. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.